QuickBooks Desktop 2023 lists. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks. Going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize on the home page to the gray area. View drop down. We've got the hide icon bar and open windows list checked on the left hand side. You see the open windows. Reports drop down. Company and financial P&L profit and loss income statement. 010124 123124 on the range January through December. Customize the report with the fonts and numbers, changing it to 12. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then going to the reports drop down company and financial this time. The big balance sheet with the date change 123124. Customizing that report. Fonts and numbers, changing it to 12. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the setup process we do every time. We're going back to the, the home page in the open windows. We're now going to be thinking about lists. Noting that the term lists has some meanings within QuickBooks that are different even than accounting terminology. It haven't been gotten in part due to the fact that these items were housed under the dropdown of lists. So when you hear bookkeepers using QuickBooks use the terminology lists, they might have some very specific meaning for the items that are under the lists category. Note that even if you use the QuickBooks online software that doesn't have the dropdown up top, they still use some categories oftentimes of lists. So the major two things under the lists category are gonna be the chart of accounts and the items list. These are gonna be very important items and most of these items are things, including the chart of accounts and items, are going to be things that we have to set down for the baseline to underlie the normal data input within to the system, which is usually done as we've seen before with the forms, the bills, the pay bills, the invoices, and so on. So once again, the major two, and you can tell they're the major two because they're in the home page. they were important enough for QuickBooks to put them in the company section, are the chart of accounts and the items and services. We'll talk more about them in depth in and of themselves because they're so foundational, but note that the chart of accounts is the actual accounts that have to be you know, used whenever we enter a financial statement transaction, remembering that the end result of bookkeeping is us recording actual financial transactions that are happening throughout history, throughout time, through time, and those then are gonna be used to generate the balance sheet and the income statement when we see the balance sheet and the income statement, they are constructed from accounts. They're constructed from the chart of accounts. So in order to enter any transaction, which actually has an impact on the financial statements, we need a chart of accounts to do so. So it's foundational. And then the other one is gonna be the items and services. And the primary items and services are usually gonna be those that we do to generate revenue. So if using the invoices and sales receipts, we will have to have the, the services in there. Even if we don't have inventory and we're billing people, we'd still like to group the services. Usually, unless we have a very easy system where we're basically possibly doing gig work or something, we're getting paid by a platform and we're not even using these forms in that case, possibly. We're just waiting till something clears the bank and then recording the deposit from a particular vendor through uh, the bank feeds. So. I'm going to go to these items with the list drop down. The chart of accounts is going to be the first one. If we go into the chart of accounts, you can see it's a list of accounts. They're going to be ordered primarily by type, meaning the types, and we'll go into this in more detail in a future presentation, but basically are the balance sheet and then the income statement, asset types, liability types, equity types, and then income and expense type of accounts. Generally, these accounts are going to be used every time we enter a form. You really want to understand that because that'll give you some idea of what's actually happening in the end result balance sheet and income statement whenever you do a data input form like a bill, a check, an invoice, a sales receipt, and you want to have a kind of an understanding of that so you can you can fix any problems when if any problems occur. So crucial list, we'll get back into that in future presentations. And then the next crucial list is the item list. So most of these items, you can see are the service items and the inventory items. And those are going to be critical whenever, if I go back to the homepage, we create an invoice. 
then we'd like to make the data input as easy as possible by then having the item set up a service item or inventory item which will pull over the the amount here this one's a little bit different because we have these job cost system but in any case it'll pull over the detail related to the item as we enter it into the system which is quite useful and then the item is going to tell the system which accounts are going to be impacted which means of course we need a chart of accounts in order to do that so if i close this back out and i say no and i go to the items list notice that if i was to double click on an item you can see here that it's charging the cost of goods sold here account and then the income account those accounts are going to be needed to be set up in the chart of accounts before we can set up the items We'll go through this full setup process in the second half of the course. Those are the major items that would be set up, but we also saw some other items, which could be the sales tax items, helping us to process the sales tax. So when we set up sales tax, we've got to add the items in order for the sales tax to be properly working as well. Now let's go back up to the lists up top and we got the fixed asset item list. The fixed assets represent things that we're purchasing that are usually large property, plant, and equipment. You might call it depreciable assets, you could call it. So that's going to be things like, you know, building uh, equipment and so on and so forth that you're going to depreciate over time. Now, note that it's you could use this to kind of back up and support the, the items that you're recording into the system. But also note that you're going to usually be dependent to some degree on an outside software, possibly tax software to help you to track the property, plant and equipment. Let me try to explain what I mean. If I go to the balance sheet over here and we go down to the fixed assets, these are the fixed assets. Now, even if you're on a cash based system, you're going to have to put the large purchases on the books, even if you pay cash for it as an asset and depreciate it, which kind of makes sense because if you wrote off a large purchase, it would kind of distort your comparison of one period to another on the income statement, which is kind of the point, but you need to do it at least for taxes. Even small businesses are gonna be required to do it to some degree for taxes. The issue is then that when you do the taxes, there's a different depreciation schedule that may be used than a book depreciation schedule. So you're gonna have to do depreciation in accordance with the tax law, which means you're gonna have to enter the depreciation into tax software. So oftentimes for small to mid companies, mid-sized companies, you might as well kind of use the tax software to help you to calculate the depreciation. And you can, you can kind of then, so what you need to provide to the to the to the tax preparer to help you out to do that is usually going to be the increases to the depreciation or to the fixed assets and the decreases the disposals the purchases and the disposals and there's different ways that you could track basically the purchases and and the disposals so note that you might be thinking that this fixed asset items list is going to be a detailed list that's going to help you to calculate all the detail for the depreciation accumulated depreciation and so on but that's probably not what you're going to want to do in a bookkeeping system because you're going to have to repeat that again in the tax software because you're going to have the tax software do it on a tax basis we on the bookkeeping side may try to do our books on a tax basis as well so we don't have two different bases or we might try to have our book basis which might be more reasonable than a tax basis which is really weird and then we have the tax basis as well but even if we do that the tax software that's going to be used will usually be able to calculate both book and tax depreciation and therefore it's often useful to periodically put that into the tax software and then enter adjusting entries uh, periodically for depreciation we'll talk more about that basically in the future but so so just to, we'll, so we'll get into the depreciation a bit in the future but that's a general idea we got the price level lists so you can set different price level lists and then you can apply these lists to like customers that can be applied out when they're purchasing things so if you go to the customer item for example and i go to the customer center and i was to go into a particular customer then uh, we have the price level which is on the payments tab. And then you've got your options for your price level lists that you can apply out. So then when you select that customer, when you're, when you're uh, selecting the invoice that can uh, take place at that time. 
So then we've got this sales tax codes. So sales tax codes. So when we're processing sales tax, remember that's on the, when we go to the home page and we create an invoice, for example, we might have the sales tax that's going to be applied. And when we set up the items, we have to tell it whether it's subject to sales tax or not. And so that'll be with the sales tax code typically. And then if we go down, we've got the payroll item list. So when we set up payroll, these are going to be the underlying items that will help us to process payroll. So are they a salaried employee? We've got the sick stuff, the bonus, all these items are going to be used in order for us to, to easily populate or process payroll. Setting up all these items can be kind of complex because the payroll process can be kind of complex. We have a whole course on, you know, setting up payroll. We'll talk a little bit more about payroll in the future presentation, but, but it's, it's large enough of a topic to be its own kind of world of stuff. And then, so we got the payroll items, payroll schedule list. So we pay people, usually you only have one thing here because usually you pay people bi-weekly and that's it or semi-monthly and that's it or monthly and that's it. But you could have multiple payroll schedules. You pay some people monthly and some people buy weekly or whatever, but there's that class list. The classes are going to be a special kind of term or use. They're turned on here because they got castle. It's a, it's a construction company. We've got some courses that get into classes in and of themselves. There's various uses that you might use classes uh, for, but we won't spend, we won't be focusing mainly on that workers comp. So workers comp lists, which is going to be specific to a particular company for the workers comp needs kind of connected to payroll. And then we've got the other names list noting that in QuickBooks, we typically have vendors, we have customers, and then you might set up, you know, some other things as like other names. So then we've got, we've got the workers comp other names and the customers and vendors, the sales rep. So if you have sales reps, then you can have, that would be a special area for those types of companies, customer type. So we could set up basically different customer types, which then again, you can apply into the customer area, which might give you some more sorting capacity in some reports with regards to the customers. We've got the vendor type, same kind of situation on the vendor side of things. So you could set up different types for the customers and vendors. We've got the job type. So uh, this would be in because we have the job cost system here. So they got the different types of jobs. And then we've got other lists here, job types, uh, terms list. So when we set up our, our invoices, for example, we might have the terms. So when we enter the invoice, when do we expect to be paid? net 30 and 30 days and 15 days, we might have some discount kind of components that are going to be uh, in there too. some more complex uh, terms that can be put in place. And just so you could see that if I went to the if I went to the customers and create an invoice. So the terms are go here's going to be a term item. That's where those lists po are populated. And so let's go to the lists. We've got items customer message list so we can put some default messages that we can pull in when we're doing some communications with the customers that can make things a little bit more streamlined and faster in some cases and then you got the payment methods so you got the different methods of payment when we're populating our data input you can see we have the you know the check is usually the cash the check the american express discover and so on different forms of payment which can give us some more detail when we're trying to, to drill back down onto a, a transaction and see what precisely happened within it. And then we've got the ship listing. So this is the shipping lists. And then we've got the vehicle lists. Okay. And then we've got the templates. So we could set up different templates to customize our invoices, any kind of thing that we're giving to the customer. There's a default form for it, which is sufficient generally for the data input, but we might, we might want to customize that in order to try to try to make it nicer to present to the customer, put our logo on it and that kind of stuff. And there might be some fields that we want to basically add to the form from a data input side of things as well. So we can create templates for that. And then we've got the memorized transactions. 
So we might have some transactions that we're gonna that we want to set up as a memorized transaction so we can get to them more easily. So we've got that list. Notice that this is one of those types of things that you might put in your favorites tab or something if you use a lot of the memorized transactions so you can get there easily. So edit, uh, add, edit multiple list entries. So this is when we're, what we're gonna use when we wanna enter multiple items at one time. We'll talk about that more when we create a new company file and we enter multiple things. So those are the major, the major lists, company, homepage. So bottom line with the lists, the main two are gonna be the chart of accounts and the item lists. Those are the main two lists. They're the foundational things typically. They're not stuff that you're gonna go into all the time during your data input typically. They're the things that you have to set up that are gonna be the underlying foundations used when you do the data input, such as the bills, the pay bills and so on. For that reason, they can be a little bit more complex and a lot of people don't understand them as much because they haven't worked with them because usually they're already set up when they start working with a company and they start entering the data input into the system. But if you understand the foundational stuff, chart of accounts and items especially, then you'll have a lot better understanding of what's happening when you enter the forms and you'll be able to kind of diagnose problems much more easily. That's a lot of times where the value comes in.